Good day, everyone. Once again, we are back together and thank you for joining us on our channel. Um, you know, after taking just a bit of a break, uh, just for some self-care, just to make sure that we recover. Um, so if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure that you hit that subscribe button and so that you can be part of the family. And uh, please also push that not notification bell so that you are notified every time that we are posting a new lesson. And today, um, I wanted us to start with a new uh, section, which is analytical geometry. So first of all, as I begin, I want you to please understand that analytical geometry is still geometry. OK, so which means that we are going to uh, be dealing with the fundamentals of geometry, but this time more on the analysis part where we are uh, going to be calculating things like distance and so on and so forth. So um, for those of you who haven't watched our, you know, many lessons on geometry, perhaps it would be a good time to start now so that you can sort of chalk your memory, know what the principles of geometry are uh, so that you can um, uh, apply them. Of course, we're going to expand a little bit more this time around um, and focus on even calculations. So first of all, as we introduce this lesson, Right, the first thing that I want us to quickly do is to remind ourselves what we did in the previous grades, right? So let's start with uh, the distance formula. So if we've got a, a, a line and there are two points in that line, let's call that uh, point A and B. And the coordinates of A is X1 and Y1, okay? And the coordinates of B x2 and y2 well how do we determine the distance of line a b so the distance of line a b should be always equal to now note in this case it's going to be the square root okay but first of all let's say x2 minus x1 okay the difference between the uh, x values uh, squared plus in this case y2 minus y1 squared. Now remember to put that in a square root, right? So that is the distance formula. So we remember that in analytical geometry, whenever we want the distance uh, of a certain uh, line, um, in this case, we'll take the difference of the uh, x coordinates, y coordinates, and of course, we are going to be looking at the square root of it. Okay, we're going to square them and take the square root. Now, the second thing that we're supposed to remember is a gradient. Now, I'm going to take it gradually uh, because I want us to remind ourselves of these very important principles. Now, in this case, when we talk about gradient, remember that when we talk about the gradient of a line, we're talking about the steepness of a line. OK, so if I take these two lines, for instance, let's call this one uh, line D E. And let's call this one um, E and F. OK, so first of all. OK, um, so let's call this E F. OK, if if I look at the gradient of line D E, line D E has a positive gradient. And now, please, I want you to remind yourself of this right hand tick rule. OK, so yeah, think of, you know, when your teacher ticks, OK, they normally tick in this way. OK, uh, hardly you hardly find someone who ticks in this manner. Uh, so in this case, what we simply are going to do is we're going to take the gradient. Um, how do we determine the gradient of these lines? It doesn't matter whether we take line DE or we take uh, line DF, uh, EF rather. Uh, in this case, the gradient of each line. OK, what we simply do, OK, if the coordinates of, of D are x1, y1, okay, uh, x1 and y1, and there is x2, sorry, uh, x2 and y2, then all we simply do to take the coordinates, we simply say, remember that you take the y's first, okay, uh, y2 minus y1 uh, divided by x2, uh, over x1, x2 minus x1. Now, please just keep in mind, the most important thing to remember here 
is that in the same order, so if you started with uh, this, the coordinates of E um, for your Y, it means that you should also start with the coordinates of E for your X. So if you take Y2 to be here, then it means that you must also for X2, you must take the, that coordinate there. All right, so please just make sure to keep that order. Now, in this case, uh, um, again, even for EF, you would do the very same thing, okay, uh, if you've got your coordinates. However, I want you to note, uh, for line DE, because it is an increasing straight line, you know that the gradient of it will be greater than zero. So it's always good to uh, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, analyze. Remember, this is analytical geometry, right? To analyze that the answer that you get must correspond to the picture that you have. Whereas if you look at um, uh, the gradient of uh, EF, for instance, uh, definitely we are expecting a gradient that is less than zero in that case. Okay, right. So, and that is it in terms of... Uh, um, uh, you know, calculating the gradient. However, there is something else that we know. And what is it? We know that if we are given an angle, now please, I want you to note this carefully. If we are given a line, okay, so uh, suppose we are given that line there, and they tell us that this line has an angle uh, or makes an angle of theta um, with the x-axis remember that if we want to find the gradient the slope okay we can also say it's equal to the tan of or the tangent of angle theta okay where theta in this case is the angle between the x-axis and that particular line so please keep that in mind Okay, so whenever we want the gradient in this case, and by the way, still the same rules apply. Uh, that line there looks like it has a positive gradient. So I'm expecting that if I calculate 10 of theta, it will be a positive gradient. Okay. Uh, and of course, you can always find a negative, a line with a negative gradient. Uh, that is in this case, if I find that I'm given something to this effect. Okay, so any line that's drawn in that uh, particular way and they give me again uh, the angle uh, there okay so the angle between the positive x axis and that angle there then I know in this case I'm going to say 10 of theta and I'm going to find my angle just please be careful that it must be the angle between the positive uh, x axis and that particular line right uh, meaning if, uh, for argument's sake, uh, if I'm given the angle, let's say, beta over here, okay, I need to always resolve that angle in terms of uh, its, uh, um, uh, you know, from the positive x-axis. So, means that I'm going to use, obviously, my geometry, 180 minus, okay, beta will give me the angle theta in this case. So, just keep in mind, uh, that is how we deal with gradients. This is just a reminder of what we should know uh, before we apply it, right? Okay, so uh, whilst we're still on gradients, okay, um, just keep in mind again, whenever we've got parallel lines, and I want you to remember that, okay, so when we've got parallel lines, okay, we know that if we've got two lines, which uh, of which one has a gradient of y is equal to let's say m1 x plus c which is the equation of a straight line and we've got another straight line uh, y is equal to m2 x plus c now if those lines are parallel i want you to please note that it means that m1 okay which is the gradient remember that the coefficient of x for a straight line okay the coefficient of x for a straight line um uh, in this case when you put it in standard form y is equals to mx plus c um that's your gradient so in this case it would mean that m1 is equal to m2 please i want you to note that 
once they tell me that lines are parallel or if we are given say for argument's sake they talk about a parallelogram in this case uh, then we know that the opposite lines uh, of a parallelogram uh, uh, you know are parallel so in this case we know that the gradients should be equal okay right but if we've got two lines uh, let's say for argument's sake uh, here are two lines they give us those two lines let's call this uh, a and b uh, let's call this d and e okay and they tell us that these lines are perpendicular okay meaning they form 90 degrees okay they are perpendicular to each other right if the gradient let's say uh, for argument's sake uh, let's say um, the equation of a b is m1 x plus c and the equation of de y de in this case um, it's m2 x plus c now once they are perpendicular please keep in mind that the gradients m1 okay multiplied by m2 should give me negative one i want you to please remember that okay um, let me simplify it for you so if m1 is a certain value all right so let's say m1 is a specific value it means note it means m2 will be the inverse of that value and you change the sign so it will be minus one okay i'm changing the sign over m1 let me just illustrate what i mean uh, by that Suppose we've got a line y is equal to 2x plus 4, right? And they tell us that, um, you know, uh, uh, let, let's say for argument's sake, there's our line y is equal to 2x plus 4, okay? And there is another line in this case. Let's say there's our ab, so this is the equation of ab, okay? There's another line de, okay? And they want us to find the gradient of DE. Now, in this case, what will be the gradient of AB? The gradient of AB is 2. So, therefore, in this case, once they tell us that DE is perpendicular, then I know that all I'm simply going to do is that the gradient of DE will be equals to, now note the inverse, and I change the sign. So, it will be minus 1 over Two. Can you see that? Because if I take those two gradients, okay, uh, the gradient of AB multiplied by the gradient of DE, okay, note in this case, what am I going to get? I'm going to get 2 multiplied by negative 1 over 2, and you'll note this gives me negative 1. So all you simply do is you take your gradients and um i mean you take the gradient of the one and the gradient of the other one will be uh, the inverse okay with a changed sign so um if they say to you for argument's sake uh, prove that the gradient uh, uh, or line de is perpendicular so you must actually prove by making or, or taking the the product of their gradients and in this case the product must give you negative one okay right so um that is it in terms of gradients okay as we move on to the next thing all right now let's talk about the midpoint okay so essentially what is a midpoint a midpoint is a point that divides a line into two equal parts so in this case if i've got uh, a and b uh um, side a and b and we've got that as x1 and y1 and we've got the other one as x2 and y2 okay so the midpoint let's call it point m so the coordinates of the midpoint please i want you to note um for so for the x coordinates you're just simply going to say it's going to be x1 plus x2 divided by 2 so that is how you're going to get the coordinates of m 
all right and of course the coordinates of uh um you know the y coordinates of m in this case let's call that x m and y m okay so the coordinates the y coordinates of the midpoint uh you're going to say that is going to be y one plus y2 again so that's y1 plus y2 uh, over 2 okay uh, that would give you your uh, the coordinates of your midpoint now please remember um you know we there are specific uh, terminologies that we use for midpoint uh, in this case we might not necessarily say midpoint but it might be inferred somehow so if you think about uh, if we say that a line is bisected, okay, so remember by virtue of using that word bisect, okay, meaning that we are cutting something in half into two equal parts. Uh, in, in some cases, yeah, you, you might get something along those lines uh, where they use phrases that suggest uh, that it is the midpoint, but not necessarily say that it is the, the midpoint. So just uh, look out for those as well. Okay, right. So moving on, uh, let's talk about other words or phrases that they use. Okay, so if we use the word altitude uh, again, okay. So if we use the word altitude, um, in fact, I should have included the one before. Uh, you know, when we're talking about a bisector. Now, when we use the word altitude, so please remember, if you've got a triangle, okay, let's just draw a triangle ABC there, okay? So when I say uh, a line is an altitude, now please remember this, an altitude is always drawn from the vertex of one triangle. Oh, look at my skew line there. Okay, so it's drawn from the vertex of the one triangle, okay, and um, uh, to uh, the, the side that is opposite that vertex, okay, and what happens in this case is that um, once I draw my, uh, my line, which is an altitude, uh, it will always, in this case, be at 90 degrees to the opposite side. So a vertex to a triangle will always by uh, uh, not bisect uh, bisect rather but is always perpendicular uh, to the other side now let, let me just take a quick example they might say to us okay find the altitude uh, the equation of the altitude let's say uh, point a is uh, just for argument's sake uh, minus one and uh, three and b is um two uh, x is equal to 2 and y is equal to uh, 7. And then let's say c, for argument's sake, x is uh, 5 and y is, okay, let's just say for argument's sake, uh, y is 1. Okay, right. Now, in this case, if I wanted to find the equation of the altitude what am i going to do now please i want you to follow me in this case right so first of all i would need to find the gradient of line a b so what you'd say is let me find the gradient of a b and remember how do we determine the gradient you'd say y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and in this case, you'd say, well, how do I determine the gradient? That is going to be um, uh, y2. Let's get that to be uh, x2 and y2. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to say x2, which is uh, my coordinates at c, uh, which is 1, minus y1, uh, which is 3. Okay. Uh, of course, I didn't draw it uh, uh, um, on the Cartesian plane, so please don't mind that. Okay. So that's 1 minus 3 divided by x2. Now, please note that I'm going to take x2 from the same coordinates uh, of c that I took uh, the, 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 x, uh, the y value. So where I got the 1, I'm now going to take the x coordinate. So I'm starting with that 5 minus, in this case, a minus 
1, a negative 1, right? So in this case, what I'm going to get is a negative, uh, so that's minus 2 there, and this is going to be 5 minus minus 1, this is going to give us 6. So essentially, that's going to become negative 1 over 3. So that is the gradient, okay, of AB. Now, what then should be the gradient? Uh, sorry, let's call that uh, a point there. Let's let's call it uh, T, okay? So what should be the gradient of BT? Now, remember, once it is perpendicular, what does that mean? It means that, therefore, the gradient of BT, which is uh, that line, which is the altitude in this case, so the gradient of BT, remember we said we invert and then we change the sign. So in this case, the inverse of 1 over 3 is 3 over 1, which is 3. And of course, um, because the sign was negative initially, now it's going to become positive. Okay, so now I've got the, uh, the gradient of BT. But now remember, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the equation of this altitude. Uh, in this case, if they told me that BT is an altitude. So what I'm simply going to do is I am going to say, okay, uh, in this case, we know that according to the straight line formula, uh, we know Y is equals to MX plus C. Our M value is 3. So this is 3X plus C. What I always like doing is to find the, uh, the value of C, I'm just simply going to substitute uh, one of the points there, and I mean, not one of the points, uh, point, uh, or rather BT, passes through the point 2 and 7. Can you see that? So I'm going to say, well, let's substitute for that point 2 and 7 there, which is point B. Um, so where I see Y, I'm going to say that 7 is equal to 3, times where I see X, I'm going to substitute 2 uh, plus C, and all we simply do in this case, uh, determine the value of C. That's going to be 3 times 2 is 6. If I take it to the other side, it becomes a, a negative. So as a result, we get C is equals to 1. So meaning the equation of our altitude is therefore equal to uh, Y is equals to 3X plus 1. Of course, some other people uh, prefer using um, the formula Y minus Y1 is equal to m x minus x1 nothing wrong with that okay and how this one works is you do the very same thing uh, y minus so my y1 value i'm going to substitute my point so it's going to be y minus 7 uh, just keep in mind that uh, there's a minus sign there uh, is equal to m which is 3 uh, into x minus uh, our x1 is the x coordinate at that very same point that we're using that we substituted. So that's 3 minus, I mean, uh, x minus 2. And then obviously, all you simply try and do y minus 7 is equals to uh, 3x minus 6. Okay, so in this case, what you do is just take the 7 to the other side. So y is equal to 3x. Okay, so that's minus 6 uh, plus 7 and you end up with plus one. So in uh, in fact, you still get to the same answer. All right, so that is um, uh, when it comes to altitude, just keep that in mind, okay? Uh, that all it simply means is that we are talking about a line, uh, please remember, uh, that is perpendicular. It's from a vertex of a triangle, but also it is perpendicular to the other side. Okay, right, just another term that I want to um, uh, just include, and I think we're going to call that a day for now, and then we're going to expand on this, um, you know, just with examples the next time. Um, another word that we can, uh, we often find, is when they tell us that um, uh, a, a certain line, rather, is a bisector, okay? So in this case, uh, if we say that uh, it is a bisector, all that it simply means. So if, uh, let's say, we've got a triangle again, um, and they tell us that 
Okay, let's say it's triangle DEF this time. Okay, and they tell us that we've got a line that is a bisector. Of course, it doesn't look like it in this case. Uh, so, uh, what does it mean when they say that this um, line, uh, let's say this line is going to be uh, E, let's call that point P, is a bisector. So, what, what it means is that it's from a vertex and it's to another side of a triangle, but it cuts that side into two equal portions. So what does that mean? It means that this side here must be, it means that DP should be equal to PF, okay? Um, in this case, let's again find, you know, just some random coordinates, okay? So if we just say for argument's sake, uh, this is going to be the points, uh, uh, let's say minus 2 and minus uh, 3. Uh, let's say F is going to be uh, 1 and um, let's say 2. And then E is simply going to be, uh, let's say, 0 and... Okay, it has to be a higher y value. Uh, let's just say 5 for argument's sake. Right, so if I wanted to find the, uh, the equation of EP, what would I do? And they tell me that EP is a bisector, okay? Uh, just uh, please keep in mind, or rather, uh, um, uh, or rather bisects, rather a uh, line DF, or sometimes they may use the word, please, and I want you to note, median. Okay, so if they say that a line is a median, in this case, what it simply means is that it's from the vertex and it actually cuts the line into two equal sides. Okay, uh, the opposite side rather into two equal sides. So all you simply do in this case, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look for the coordinates of P and P is the midpoint. Now note, it's going to be the midpoint of DF. So what we're going to do is to say, well, how do we find the midpoint? It's X1 plus X2 over 2, and it's Y1 uh, plus Y2 over 2. Okay, so let's find the coordinates of P there. So this is going to be, uh, if I take this one as my X1, that has to be my Y1 and that has to be my x2 and y2. So in this case, it's going to uh, simply be, um, so our x1 value is minus 2 uh, plus um, x2 is 1 divided by, uh, okay, that's over 2. And uh, in this case, uh, y1 is minus 3. Okay, plus y2, which is 2, uh, over 2 once again. Okay, so all you simply do is that we're going to solve and get the values of p. Uh, I see that's going to be minus 1 plus 2, what's, that's minus 1. So this will be minus 1 over 2. And of course, our other coordinate is going to be minus 3 plus 2. Um, so that would be coincidentally... That's also going to be minus 1 over 2, right? Now, these are the coordinates of P. But what do we want? We wanted to find the, so this these coordinates here, that's minus 1 over 2 and uh, minus 1 over 2, I think. Okay, so that's minus 1 over 2 as well. Now, how do you determine the coordinate, I mean, the equation of PE? I'm sure you can already see it, okay? that in this case, I've got the two points there, E and P. So what I can simply do this time is just simply to say, well, let's find the gradient of PE. Uh, um, yeah, I think it's PE. So we can find the gradient of PE by simply saying, okay, so gradient of PE, that's going to be Y2 minus Y1 uh, over X2 minus x1. Now, please note in this case, uh, it's very important. So I'm going to start with that one as my uh, y2. So it's going to be 5 minus a half. 
Okay, so minus and minus a half in this case. Uh, so that's 5 minus and minus 1 over 2. That's my y value for the other, uh, for the point E, uh, uh, P rather. And then for my x2, that's going to be 0. Okay, note, so that's 0 minus, in this case again, minus 1 over 2. So I'm, I'm, I'm finding the gradient there. Okay, so I'm going to simply say, well, uh, that gives us, uh, that's 4 and 1 over 2. Okay, oh no, actually that's 5 and 1 over 2. Uh, so that's because negative times a negative is a positive. So that's 5 and 1 over 2 divided by uh, 1 over 2. So that would be a positive 1 over 2. And we get that gradient, um, so that's 5.5 divided by half, or in this case, multiplied by 2, and that should give you 11, right? Now, in this case, what do I do? So it means that, again, y is equal to 11x plus c. And how do you get the value of c? Again, you're going to substitute one of the points, okay? So in this case, I'm going to substitute the points 0 and 5, Okay, so I'm going to say, well, um, y is 5 when x is 0. And what does that tell you? c is equal to 5. And so that means that in this case, our equation of the median, please remember that word, okay, is going to be 11x uh, plus 5. All right. Um, uh, in fact, when it comes to our terminology, for now, I want to leave it here. All right. Of course, we're going to develop this. We're going to talk about circles um, and we're going to do past exam uh, uh, questions. All right. Uh, but for now, ladies and gents, I want to leave it here. OK, uh, please just remember to subscribe. Please also just uh, tell as many people as you can about our channel. OK. And uh, of course, for those of you who need assistance with mathematics or physical science, please don't forget uh, our email address is info at mlungisingosi.co.za. And by the way, we've got a website coming soon. Okay, so please be on the lookout for it. Okay, otherwise from me for now, I'll see you guys next time. Shop shop.